Hey guys, uh, I thought I'd share with you a little video I've noticed on my solar assistant software today on my phone while I was not home that my PV panels were putting out less power than I thought they ought to be considering the uh, sunlight conditions. Now we did have a lot of sun, I mean uh, cloud coverage and some rain today, thank the Lord been a month since we had rain but at any rate uh the sun is out now and it was out earlier but it's just not putting out the power i thought it should be so i checked this on my phone and i wish i could record the phone and the voiceover as i'm doing it but for some reason when i do that um uh, youtube will not let me um uh, would not let the voice show up. So anyway, I just clicked on the inverters and we're gonna see if we can see what's going on. I had a problem like this a few weeks ago and it turned out that this is what's happening. This is uh, my inverter one, my master, and my inverter two, which is my slave. And I have three source circuits from my array to the inverters. I have source circuit one that comes in here on inverter one and source circuit two on PV2 on inverter one and then source circuit three on PV1 of inverter number two. And they're, they're all identical. They're 14 445 watt panels, uh, two strings of seven in parallel but i can look right here and my pv power on one is zero and two and three are pretty pretty close to identical i mean really close now i'm gonna be able to cut this troubleshooting short a little bit because i had a problem that in my combiner box out at my pv array a few weeks ago in which this the breaker uh, where I combined my two strings together was tripped out and it shouldn't have tripped because it's a uh, it's a 40 amp breaker and I'm really using it as a disconnect because this will never see 40 amps even with a direct short and it won't see 40 amps anyway I'm going to go out there and check it um, as I go by I will also look at my uh, uh, surge suppressor on the side to build in it's going to show me that this is off, I'm sure. And I'm going to go back out to the array. And we'll pick up out there. One, one good thing to always have after you do a project, regardless of what kind of project it is, is a data manual for all the equipment associated with your project. Now, this manual I made up, <clears throat> excuse me, when I first started this project and I was using grow Watt inverters, I no longer use the grow watt. But inside this manual, I had the manual for the grow watt inverters with my settings that I had started with and the data for the solar panels that I would that I'm using and also for the batteries. So in this case, I'm looking at the the uh, PV modules. And I'm using the 445 watt units, Zen Shine units. So let's see what the data says about it. Well, I dropped my pin. All right, I'm using the four, 445 watt units. I know I highlighted the 450, but that was a mistake. And let's see what it says as far as current. Maximum power current is 10.6 amps. And the maximum short circuit is 11.5 amps. So I have two strings in parallel. So this 11.5 is going to combine with the second string. So my total short circuit current is 23 amps so if my panels or my wiring shorts 
anywhere on this source circuit from the array all the way back to my inverters, the maximum current should be twice this value right here, which should be 23 amps. That's the maximum that the PV panels will put out under standard test conditions. Uh, these are bifacial units, so they have the ability to put out more power than their rated power, but I know they didn't today because it's been cloudy and rainy. So we're going to go out there and I'm pretty confident when I get out there, I'm going to find that 40 amp breaker tripped because that's what happened last time. But there's no way current tripped it out because it's not, it's uh, the maximum current is 23 amps. So let's just go out there and see. All right, let's head out to the array, see what we can find. top one has no lights on it and that is source circuit one right here source circuit two and three are on which is what we saw on uh, solar assisted a few minutes ago so let me get into this box and we'll see what we find out okay just as I thought because this has happened before this breaker is off this is a 40 amp breaker and it's the breaker that sends the source circuit one back to my inverters. And even if these wires are shorted together, it should never see 40 amps. So I, I wasn't using it as a breaker. I was using it as a disconnect. You see source circuit two and three are on and they're pretty much identical. They are identical uh, circuits. There's seven 445 watt panels on this um, string, uh, 1A, and seven 445 watt panels on this string, 1B. They combine, come through these fuses, they combine here, and then go out to my array, I mean to my inverters. Now I'm on my drawing, I do have two damaged panels. If you watched one of my previous videos, I have a cow that cracked one of these on string 1B and then also on string 2B. I uh, don't remember which ones. But anyway, I just walked through the panels. Everything looks okay. Uh, other than they are cracked, but it doesn't seem to be any obvious damage. I'm going to pull these fuses so I can make sure I mean, according to this, I've got power. And this, of course, is going to come through because these fuses are on. But I'm going to pop these fuses out and then we'll check it again. All right, fuses are out. Let's see what our voltages are 297 on string. 1A, 305 on string 1B, and on the line side where I'm fixing to be working, I have zero votes. So I'm gonna change this breaker out. Let's check it on this side of it. Zero votes. Okay. The rest of this panel is energized. So I'm working, there's 300 volts DC in here right now. So you need to use, if you're doing this yourself, and you probably ought not do this yourself, but you need to be extra careful around these live circuits. 
I don't have a way of turning this string off or this string off short of going to my MC4 connectors and disconnecting them. Now I'm not going to do that. I'm going to work this like this. But uh, if you're not qualified to do this, then you should hire somebody who is. So I'm fixing to change this breaker out and we'll go from there. As it turned out, I don't have a direct spare breaker. Uh, the one I have is a different brand and it is polarized with a negative and a positive, which is opposite of what I have up there. Negative on the left, positive on the right. And I have positive on the left and negative on the right. So what I'm gonna do, I built a second combiner box for a future expansion where I may put another set of arrays out here in the future. So I went ahead and built the box and I used my spare breakers over here. So I'm going to, there's no PV panels coming in here at all. There's no power in here. So I'm going to take uh, one of these breakers out, use it in another box and then get a couple more identical spares uh, and replace this one. All right, let me get busy. As another word of caution, if you're doing this yourself, it's good to have insulated tools. It's good to have rubber gloves and to follow all safety procedures. You definitely want to check the voltage on the stuff that you're working on. You want to be aware of what's energized inside your panel. And if you were strictly following OSHA work rules right now, we would need to have rubber gloves on and an FR uh, clothing on. Now, I'm not using rubber gloves today, and I don't have my FR shirt with me, so I'm going to do it like I am. I'm just telling you, if you're not qualified to do it, get somebody else to do it. I've got the wires disconnected and kind of tucked out of the way. Uh, these are the energized wires coming from the uh, PV panel, string 1 and 1A and 1B. And I just took the output and kind of tucked it down here out of the way. On these DIN mounted breakers, there's little clips back there in the back that you'll need to pop out like so. And then the breaker will lift out like that. Now, another thing you could check if you're having a problem like this, uh, some of these breakers, I don't remember about this one, if it's thermal magnetic, uh, I think it is. If you have loose connections, that could cause the breaker to get hot and trip. So you always want to make sure your connections are snug, which I have already done that before. So that's not, that wasn't an issue. All right, let's stick this one in. And then you just got to snap these little clips back up. Okay, well, I need both hands to put these wires back in. As you can see on some of these wires, uh, particularly these right here, I'm using a ferrule. This is number 10 uh, hookup wire. It's a very flexible wire. So that means the strands are very thin. So a lot of strands in here. So I put the ferrule on there to protect the wire. Now, if you have standard wire like uh, THHN or PV wire, you really don't need that. You can use it if you want, but the strands are, are of such size that you're not likely to damage them. But on this very flexible hookup wire, I use these little ferrules. Okay, I got the breaker in place, so let's put some fuses in and see what we got. Now, I am going to leave this one off. I won't turn this on 
until I get both of these on and verify voltages. Okay, let's see what we got. On the line side. Three hundred and six volts. All right. Let's see what happens. Breaker is on. The lights on the SPD are on. And I have two hundred and fifty volts roughly. Let's check these other arrays. Well, 260, 250 something. And about 250. So they're looking about the same. Let's see, my amp meter will not check DC, so there's no need me putting an amp meter on it. But uh, it will not check DC amps, it will check DC voltage. But we're going to go back into uh, to my solar power room and we'll get on the computer and see what it says and i could check this on my phone right here but i would be able to record what i'm doing um and get the voice on it the audio on it anyway let's go back over to the room okay i'm back in my solar power room and i'm looking at my solar assistant and you can see that my source circuit one for my inverter one is back online 3200 watts source circuit two is 3300 watts and this is source circuit three on inverter two is 3300 watts so they put out about the same power uh so i'm going to say that we've got this back in back in service like it ought to be uh, got a little bit of cloud coverage out there it's i don't know what time it is three o'clock or something like that well four o'clock putting out ten thousand watts roughly and charging the batteries this this is looking at 15 of the 17 batteries but uh didn't put out a lot of power today because of the clouds but i'm going to tell you what i was thankful for the rain it's been over a month since we had any rain so very thankful for that so this is back in service, back on at uh, 100%. So I say it's good. Hope you uh, found this helpful. Another little tidbit. Uh, I've done a lot of electrical troubleshooting through my life. And one of the problems, the biggest headaches you run into if you go to a customer's location or even to your own, as you come up and you pick up this device that looks like, hey, it's a spare. And you put it in and it doesn't work. And so you keep troubleshooting more only to find out that the device you have is bad. And it's even more frustrating when it's been bad all along, but the client for some reason kept it instead of throwing it away, or instead of marking it as bad. And at least for my customers, when I do that, it costs them a lot more money because they're, they're down a lot longer. Uh, in, the, in some of these industrial plants, smaller industrial plants. But anyway, I got the information off of this. I've marked it bad. I'm gonna put it in the garbage can here shortly. And if you got bad equipment, Get the information you need off of it and get rid of it. At the very least, mark it as bad. All right, a couple other things I might mention to you. If you're changing out breakers, you got a breaker that's a problem and you're changing it out, you need to make sure that you use the right replacement breaker. For example, this is a 40 amp DC breaker rated at 500 volts. So with my system, 
I have a maximum of 350 volts open circuit. So that's the maximum voltage that I should see on the output of my PV array. Uh, so in this case, the 500 volts is heavy enough. I mean, it's high enough. And then the 40 amps is higher than the 23 amps on the short circuit, which I showed you earlier. But some of these systems, and possibly even the Solar 15K, will allow you to run up to 500 volts, or maybe even higher from your PV array. And generally higher voltage is, is good because it reduces your current, it reduces your losses in your lines, puts more power into your home. But you got to make sure that your breaker rating voltage is sufficient for the voltage that you have. Like in this case, this is a 500 volt breaker. This DC breaker is a thousand volt breaker. Okay. Uh, this is a 40 amp as well, thousand volt. You need to make sure that if you're changing out DC breakers or AC breakers, as far as that goes, if you're changing out a DC breaker, be sure and put a DC breaker back. If you're changing out an AC breaker, be sure and put an AC breaker back. That's important. And then in this case, this um, this breaker is non-polarized, but this breaker is. And as I showed you earlier, with the arrangement I had wired this one for, my plus was on the left and my minus was on the right. So you want to make sure if you're putting in a polarized breaker that you hook it up as indicated on the breaker. So negative here and positive there. And it does make a difference. So anyway, just make sure you put the right breaker back. And that applies to any other equipment that you put in or change out. Make sure you put your, your replacement part is compatible with your system.